Well, good afternoon. Today we're going to talk about and show you the basics of the MP5 A3. The A3 is the type that we used on the day of the Iranian Embassy siege back in 1980. There it is in front of me. I'm not going to touch it just yet because we haven't carried out the safety precautions on it. However, tremendous weapon and we'll come into the, the bits and pieces of it that you might want to know, as you did with an 9mm pistol. <clears throat> First of all, quick introduction I haven't done for a while. The regiment, 15 years in the SAS. It's on my website. Go, go, go. Jamie Bell plays me in the film Six Days and six days was taken from the content of this book. The website is www.rusty-firmin.com Have a look at the shop on there. And then we've got Rusty Firmin SAS TV, which this is going on on YouTube. Um, so if you've got any like-minded people who are interested, get them to join. It's free. Not much is free in this life. But we've got 16,000 plus on there now. If everybody got one, that would be absolutely amazing. But, um, you know, if you can, we want like-minded. We don't want the Walter Mitties. We want the like-minded people on there. And then there's, um, if you take a look at um, the Facebook page, SAS Special Air Service um, Military Collectors and Facts page, that's our Facebook page, and that's got an awful lot of members now as well. Feel free to have a look, ask to join if you really want to. Um, we try and keep the waltz out, and it's working so far. The page is doing really well. So with that said, feel free. It'd be great to have you aboard. Anyway, we've come to talk about this. And as I pick it up, what's the first thing we do with any weapon we pick up, past or anything else? We do the normal safety precautions on it. And that's what I'm going to do now. So, there we are. A weapon without a magazine on it. Doesn't mean to say there's not a round left in the barrel. Not at all. I've got to make it safe. So, we check the safety catches on safe, which we'll come on to in a bit, which it is. I would turn it over to the right because I'm a right-handed firer. Have a look inside to make there's no make sure there's no round left. And also, if you can't see, put your finger in to the barrel itself. You can feel the back of the barrel. You'll know if there's a cartridge in there because you can't get your finger in. <laughs> Simple. Um, then, okay, let the working parts go forward. Put it onto fire. Fire it off in the safe area. And then put the safety catch straight back to safe. The weapon now is absolutely clear and ready for demonstrations and stuff. And that's what we need to do. And you do that every time you hand a weapon over, take it out of the armory, you know, because accidents occur. Oh, I forgot. No, you can't forget. Okay, get that drill into your head. So... After that, we're going to strip the weapon down to show you the, the workings of it. It's a Hecklecock, German-made um, machine gun, MP5. They call it machine pistol. Uh, to me, it doesn't relate, but anyway, that's fine. But um, So, the first thing you do, we've made it safe, we've done the NSPs on it. And we work from the back in this case, so we take the plug out, pull out the retractable stock. There's part one done. Okay. Part two is lift down the trigger and then take out the bolt assembly. That comes to pieces. We'll do that in a minute. Then three. 
take the trigger, trigger mechanism off, lay it out, put it down. Leaves you with what we call the barrel group, or I call the barrel group. Um, and there we are. Okay, the bolt assembly, it's got the recoil spring on it. When the gun goes backwards, it has to have a spring. Push it forward again. Simple. <laughs> Germans are cunning, aren't they? <clears throat> then the bolt assembly. Twist it round. It only goes in one way. Take that apart. And then in that bolt assembly is where the firing pin would come out when it went to fire a cartridge and a bullet. It pop its head out there. There's the firing pin. But you can see that's been deactivated as well with the spring. The spring stays with that, obviously, because it needs to go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. You pull that apart, and that's where the firing pin would come out. But then it should come out in that little gap there, right in the middle. But because it's deactivated, it can't possibly, not only that, you can't fire anything because the barrel is full of um, filler <laughs> so and we lay it out and then we clean it if you need to lightly oil it afterwards or working parts maybe you, and that's it you know you clean it if you've been firing it that's as far as we would strip it down yes I can take it apart further but if it needs that, it probably needs somebody with all the tools, and that would be the armor. Um, you know, if you had a broken firing pin, they, they would just fix it for you in five minutes. Daily cleaning and stuff, this is it. So you put it back together, okay. The way I put it back together is get the bolt assembly. Now it only goes in one way. You can see those, those they pop up the rollers on each side. If you try and put it in the other way, it doesn't work. So that's your first one done. Then I then put it into the housing, if you like, and then spin it round. And the first part, sometimes the most difficult part, is done. Okay, it's going to work. It's held in tight. It can only go in one way. Then I put the spring in. That's out of the way then. I put it to one side. Then I go for the trigger group. Okay, it's got a smaller stud than the other one. You've got to understand that these have been well used. <clears throat> that leaves it in that state. Okay. So once you've got it into that state, you want to put your housing back in. There, the little rat's tail sticking out at the end. Close the trigger group up. Okay, it's still unsafe. retractable stock on this one is quite worn I can tell you I've tried to right and then you should be able to pull that back have a look inside put it off safe to a safe area fire it you've got your weapon back in the state it was when you were stripping it down okay Yes, I've left the pins sticking out a little bit because they really are stiff over the, the you know, this, these weapons are possibly from the mid to late 70s. So they've been used. <laughs> um, then, of course, after that, um, your weapon is now ready to do whatever you want. So you stripped it down, you've cleaned it, and you've put it back together. Okay. If you want to name some of the parts on it, um, which we've done to a, a degree, 
we've got the retractable stock goes backwards and then when you want to put it back in you click that lever put it back push it down give it a little tap so it doesn't come out again on the weapon itself okay from the back we've got the rear sight which is adjustable up to 200 meters and it's got different apertures on there as you can, might see so you click that round to whatever range you want and it can be adjusted left and right for um, if, you, if you need it to just in front of that is where the torch housing remember the big ugly torch at the top that would sit on there and that would be your torch I haven't got one the cocking handle is this here and it goes into the lever at the top okay it's a cocking handle forward of that is the foresight so you've got the rear sight foresight um, CQB you tend not to use the sights at all you look across the top of the in a straight line keeping the barrel straight the weapon straight okay and you tend to look over the top two eyes open different story <coughs> then you've got the barrel sticking out at the front that goes through where the handguard is which I didn't take off on purpose because that thing is stuck okay the handguard is very slim a dead giveaway for the A3 which we used at the siege very slim you've seen other ones with bulkier different variants so then we come back and we've got the sling that would go onto the front part I'll put it on in a bit and to the rear and then the middle that's why it's called a three-point sling however the sling has um, variations uh, and I'll just quickly go through them now or we'll do it a bit um, just bear with this right that sling when it's fitted could get you into six different carrying positions of the weapon my two favorites the ones I use most of all are these two at the end there the other ones I tended not to use the two at this end where I just pointed they're the ones I'd be using comfortable with them <coughs> so got the magazine housing okay we'll put the magazine in a minute and you've got the magazine release okay you push that up to get the magazine out but we'll come on to that in a second and really the working parts inside we've talked about we've got the, the, the grip itself I never put my finger inside unless I'm going to pull the trigger and you've got the trigger However, we have a safety issue. It goes into three positions and you use your right thumb to do it. It's on safe now. One click, it's on E. E means single shot in German. F, remember it is fully automatic or burst. And that's what the three mean. It's also on this side. And this is what your thumb your thumb use oh, goes on this and sets it okay safe single automatic and the story inside here when the seer comes back and forward the seer is part of the weapon inside and that determines once you click this whether you're going to fire a single shot or automatic so all in all fairly simple this retractable stock you can still have an A3 with the, um, the what do you call it stock the um, there's a name for it I can't remember <clears throat> but it's a complete it's almost like a wooden stock it's not made of wood <clears throat> so you can have the same but you can't push that in and out however you can interchange you can put this onto that one and take the stock off the other one so and that works 
So, so far, that's what we've come up with on the MP5. Got your questions and stuff, by all means, um, write them down. And the three-point sling I'll just go on to now anyway. I've showed you the positions already. Three points. The first one is that. Okay. You clip that to the front of the weapon. The way I do it is now do the back one, which is up there. And the reason I do that is because this bit here that goes over your body, you have to adjust with the buckle at the back of your body armor, everything else to make sure when you pull it down to fire it, you can do that. Okay. And the third, once you've got that adjusted, okay, the third point goes just above the magazine there. Okay, three point sling. And once you've mastered that and got it your right size, what you used to do is on the buckle, whatever the right size was, okay, and mask and tape it round so it wouldn't move. Unless I want to move it for another reason and then I mask and tape it again. Okay. It's just things you pick up as you go along. But it works. It stops the buckle moving. It stops, when you put it on, you know you can fire it. And that's the main thing. <coughs> the magazine, then, we haven't talked about. The magazine fill-in, at the moment, it's got rounds in it. To take the rounds out, there's a number of ways of doing it. Mine was just push it down and try and catch the rounds in your hand by pushing them out. To load it, put it down, push it back, put it down, push it back. Okay. 30 round magazine actually holds 31. We never put 31 in there for obvious reasons. It's a spring in there. Yeah, we load it with 30. When you're not using it, unload it. Don't leave it don't leave the rounds in there bad practice eventually you'll have a spring that doesn't spring <laughs> so uh, bad practice I'll just say that okay it's, we've got the curved magazine here it's a straight magazine which I think they call a stick magazine hate it I like the curved one on here would have our blue tape round blue team red team would have theirs <coughs> and we'd have our magazines okay one on the weapon 30 rounds on your hip, three magazines of 30 rounds, 90, 120 rounds. Same as you do with the um, the Browning. You'd have a magazine on, I use 20 round magazine on the weapon, because I'm greedy. And then the other three magazines on my other leg, strapped on, would be 12 round magazines. So I'd have four 12 round magazines, 48. And then 120, let's see. yeah, uh, quite enough for close quarter stuff, okay? That would be standard throughout everybody. So, so there we go. That's the magazine as well. Um, the way the weapon is a good weapon, you have to respect it. To put the magazine on with rounds in it, all rounds not in it, empty. Okay, safety catches on. Yep. Check that you've got rounds in the magazine and click it on. Okay, if you want to have the rounds in the magazine, it might be that it's an empty magazine you want to put on there. Okay, to release the magazine. Get the magazine release catch, which I mentioned earlier, just here. Push it up, one. Pull out the mag, check that. Safe, you're already on safe. Look inside. If you can't see in, put your finger in, as I said. Have a look, clear. Let it go back, safe area. Put it to fire, click the weapon, and then put it straight back to safe. 
That's putting the magazine on a weapon, loading the weapon and making it ready slightly different. You wanna, you've got rounds in the magazine, right? So you pick the, mag the weapon up, safe to catch it safe. Grab the cocking lever, pull it to the rear and lock it in. You can see in there, look. Check you've got rounds in the magazine, put it on. Now, to make it ready, I'd flick that and then it would, the bolt would go forward and push it into the chamber. It's a deactivated weapon, so I will let it go forward, but watch. It's gone halfway because it's deactivated, so unload, safety catch, yep. It's already lost a round look, so there's a round in there somewhere. And there it is, classic, great. It's stuck. Right, now that happens in real life, whether it's deactivated or not. Put your finger in if you can. I didn't rehearse that, guys. That just happened. So, it just shows you the round that was left in there. If you'd have just left it, and somebody else picked your weapon up and fired it, what could have happened? So I'm glad that happened. Anyway, you, you've cleared the round, you've checked inside just to make sure again, nothing there. Let it go forward, safe area, fire the weapon, safety catch straight back on. Okay, pick up your round and chuck it in your magazine. So that's load and unload. I can't do the other drills with it because it's it's got a deactivate on it. However, I think you get the idea of what's happening. Or I hope you do. <coughs> um, okay, so the rate of fire with this particular weapon would have been somewhere in the region of 900 rounds a minute. As you come down the variance of silence weapon or suppressed, it gets, it gets um, smaller. And then the Kurtz, which is a smaller version of this, the Kurtz is actually, the Kurtz just in German means short, and a Kurtz would be about that long. This is about 20, about 20 inches. A Kurtz would be about that long. Okay, same working parts, everything, but ideal for undercover work. And this weapon, I swear by it, loved it. In fact, I gave it a hot water bottle last night and put it on the hot water bottle. The cat took it. Anyway, another story. So, muzzle velocity on this one, 1300, 1312 feet per second. Remember what the 9 milli was, something like, was it 900 or something? So there's a huge difference between, even though it's 9 milli, and 9 millimeter for the people who asked the question, just means what the bore size is of the weapon. So the nine millimeter round fits into your bore size. And that's why it's called a nine millimeter. On an SLR, it's 7.62. On an Armalite, it's 5.56. Something like that. So you can see the difference. Um, and that's really what it comes from. These are all serial numbered and everything. It's actually the best weapon I've picked up for a long, long time. Um, so thank you to Isaac, freshwatermotors.co.uk. Absolutely brilliant. And just to loan us them um, so I can take you guys through is something else. I might get you a bunch of flowers, Isaac. I don't know yet. Anyway, so we've covered that. And the variants we've covered you know, the MP5, the MP5K, the MP5 silenced. Um, the ammunition, I've explained what the ammunition is. Comments. Questions. Hopefully, fire them in once this is uploaded onto YouTube. And I'll be glad to try and help. My God, my brain is dead thinking back over that time. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Who dares wins? <laughs>